Are you an aspirant of CSIR JRF licenses and wondering how to learn the Lotka Volterra competition equations so that you can solve the questions asked in the examinations? Well, stay tuned, this video is for you. Hello everyone, I am Khalid. Welcome to my YouTube channel by Blogger. And in this video, we are going to talk about the Lotka Volterra competition equations along with the tips and tricks how to solve the questions asked in the examination. So, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Before we move ahead, I just want to make one thing very clear that this lotka volterra equation is applicable in many other interactions like the predator interactions but we are not going to see that in this video. We are only going to focus upon the competition equations and the questions asked in the CSI examination from this topic only. So what are the questions in front of us before we begin this topic? First of all, what does the lotka volterra competition equation mean? How can we get to that equation and the most important of all what is the significance of this equation so we are going to see these one by one before we move to the questions and try to solve a few of them that are previously asked in the CSI examination first things first what does the lotka volterra competition equation means well this can be understood by considering a very simple philosophy that we don't live in a perfect world and we have to fight for whatever we want to get and this fight is known as competition Suppose a population of any organisms in a community, right? The individuals in that population have to fight with the other individuals of the same species for some resources that are limited, for example, mates and food, etc. This type of competition is known as intraspecific competition, where both the competing individuals belong to the same species. And at the same time, that individual have to fight with some other individuals of some other species for some other resources. And that type of uh, competition is known as interspecific competition because both the competing individuals belong to two different species. And example for that is territorial behavior. So, what is the role of lotka volterra competitive equation, competition equation in this story? Well. With the help of lotka volterra competition equation, we can get to determine the change in the population density in response to these two types of competition in a population. Well, I know this that this does not give you a very clear idea of what this equation really is. But this is just the beginning. We have to go a long way to understand all the aspects of lotka volterra competition equation so watch this video till the end now coming to the second big question which is how can we get to this equation well let me get it to you this way the roots of lotka volterra competition equation lies with the population growth model so do we have to learn all the population growth equation in order to understand this equation well no but yes we have to learn at least one equation with help of which we have we are going to derive our desired equation and what is that equation? It is an equation given for an organism which have overlapping breeding season. That means the individuals in the population of organism can breed in different seasons and not uh, breeding is not confined to any particular season. And that equation is given by dn by dt equals to r times n. The dn by dt represents the change in population size with respect to time and it is given by r times n r being the rate with which the population changes it is the intrinsic rate of natural increase and n being the population size but remember one thing this equation is given only when the resources are unlimited that means there are no intra specific competition between the individuals of this population right so in this scenario when the resources are unlimited the population is can grow exponentially with respect to time now imagine a situation when the resources are limited right in that case the individuals in the population are going to compete with each other for this resource right so in this way ultimately the population growth rate is going to get reduced and it is going to reduce by the reduction uh, is going to happen by rn times n by k 
what does k represent k is the carrying capacity of the population and what is uh, affected by k actually well k is going to affect the birth rate and death rate of the population and by affecting the birth rate and death rate ultimately r is going to get affected because r is calculated by the difference between the birth rate and death rate so if r is positive the population is going to increase in size if r is negative the population is going to decrease in size and if r is zero the population is neither going to increase nor decrease and it will remain constant throughout right so it is given by this equation and when we rearrange this equation i have written the steps so you don't get confused and ultimately we are going to get this equation which is dn by dt equals to r times n k minus n by k and this k minus n by k represents the intraspecific competition coefficient right and this equation is known as warhol's pearl logistic equation i don't know how to pronounce that but it is what it is so now we have a pop, uh, equation for population growth when the intraspecific competition is taking place in a population so now we can modify this equation for two different populations and also we can add some coefficients for interspecific competition to this very equation to get the desired lotka volterra competition equation and how we are going to do that let's have a look at that as well so here i have written the equation we just discussed for two different species for species 1 the equation becomes dn1 by dt equals to r1 n1 times k1 minus n1 by k1 and for species 2 it becomes dn2 by dt equals to r2 n2 times k2 minus n2 by k2 okay now what we are going to do here is we'll try to add some interspecific competition coefficients to these equation to see what are the effect of interspecific competition on the population growth of each species so for that first we'll have a look at uh, competitive effects of species 2 on species 1 and for that we have multiplied n2 with alpha what is alpha alpha is the competitive coefficient or the interspecific competition coefficient what does that mean suppose two individuals of species 2 are having competitive effect on species 1 which is similar to one individual of species 1 having competitive effect on species 1 or in other words we are going to see the competitive effect on species 1 so two individuals of species 2 are having the same effect on species 1 which is equal to the effect of one individual of species 1 on the total population of species 1 right so alpha in this case will be given by n1 by n2 from this equation okay so in this case one individual of species 1 and two individuals of species 2 so alpha will be given by 1 by 2 very easy right and similarly we are going to see the competitive effect of species 1 on species 2 and for that we will be multiplying n1 by beta beta being the other competitive coefficient so beta is given by n2 by n1 now all we need to do is add up these competition coefficients into the prospective population growth equation in order to see the interspecific competitive effects of one species on the other so alpha being the effect of species 2 on species 1 will be added up to the population growth equation of species 1 and beta being the effect of species 1 on species 2 will be added to the population growth equation of species 2 right and by at doing so we get these equations and when we simplify these terms we are going to get these two equations which we call as the lotka volterra competition equations right now all you need to do now is understand these basic steps and try to learn these equations because if you don't learn these equations you are going to suffer a lot in the examination right and it is very easy to learn this equation if you understand these steps okay now once we have got the lotka volterra competition equation for two different species let's see what we can do with that so i have written here on the two parts of the board the two different equations for two different species so we'll be seeing only one side because both of them are pretty similar first of all look at this equation which is dn1 by dt equals to r1 n1 times k1 minus n1 minus alpha n2 by k1 okay and i have arranged rearranged it to get the value of alpha now assume a condition if i say that suppose 
n2 equals to 0 right what will happen n2 0 means there are no individual of species 2 that means there will be no interspecific competition right and only the equation will be r1 n1 k1 minus n1 by k1 which is the equation for intraspecific comp uh, competition as we saw it earlier so how will the population grow let's look at the with with the help of this graph on the x axis i have taken the population density of species 1 and on the y axis i have taken the population density of species 2 right so if i say if i am saying that n2 is 0 that it means n2 let's say it's 0 now n1 will have the full chance to grow up to its full potential which is k1 because there is no interspecific competition which is inhibiting its growth right so it will grow up to its maximum limit which is the carrying capacity of the species 1 which is denoted by k1 but if we see as the uh, density of n2 as the density of population density of species 2 is increasing this maximum capacity of the growth is decreasing and there will be a point when the n2 will be at its, at its peak then there will be no survival of n1 or the species 1 individuals and they, their number will be zero at that point one more thing that at this point the population will, uh, of species 1 will start growing and at this point the when it will reach the carrying capacity the growth rate will be zero so dn1 by dt will be zero and throughout this line the dn1 by dt will remain zero and this diagonal line represents the isocline what is isocline isocline is that density of n2 at which the inhibitory its inhibitory effect on the species 1 is such that r1 r value is zero for species 1 right that means uh, what does what does it mean that r value is zero it simply means that the birth rate and death rate are going to be same so there will be no increase in the population or no decrease in the population as well and that's how the population size is going to remain constant and dn1 by dt will be zero in that case okay so that's how the pop uh, dn1 by d2 is going to be zero throughout the isocline right before the population will reach its maximum value so before the isocline the growth rate will be positive and the dn by dt value will be more than zero so the uh, population will start growing and it will move towards the isocline right but when it will reach the isocline the growth rate will be zero okay so there will be no growth on the isocline but suppose a condition when the uh, population size is already higher than the uh, the ca carrying capacity and uh, in that case there will be a negative growth in the population and dn1 by dt will in that case will be lower than zero so the population will start moving towards the isocline again and it will try to achieve the carrying capacity right one more thing that i want to say here at isocline as i said dn1 by dt is zero okay so how can we calculate the peak value of n2 right peak value of n1 we all know that it can uh, grow up to its maximum carrying capacity but for to calculate the value of uh, a point which i which i have mentioned here let's have a look so in this value if i uh, in this equation if i put dn1 by dt which is equal to 0 what will we get this term will be going to 0 so alpha will be equal to k1 minus n1 by n2 right and at point a see the value of n1 is 0 at um, if we move on along this line and reach point a the value of n1 is 0 so if, if n1 is 0 and we put n1 is 0 on this in this equation we will get alpha equals to k1 minus n2 right and in this way we will get the value of n2 which will be equal to k1 by alpha getting my point very easy to understand but very crucial from examination point of view because maximum questions have been asked from this topic only based on isocline and also keep uh, in mind these small formulas because uh, they are they have been asked several times in the question and in two mass questions specifically right have a look at this side of the board as well 
all the things are similar if n1 will be 0 n1 will be 0 the n2 then n2 can uh, grow up to its full capacity capacity which is k2 but as so, uh, as the n1 value will start increasing the maximum capacity of n1 n2 to grow will start reducing and at uh, isocline the dn2 by dt will is going to be zero and before the isocline the dn2 by dt will be higher than zero so the population will grow and after the isocline dn2 by dt will be lower than zero so there will be negative growth and the population will decrease up to uh, until it reach, reaches the isocline value everything else is similar just uh, one thing that n1 maximum value of n1 is going to be k2 by beta in this case right so keep these things in mind and this formula as well because they are crucial from questions point of view now coming to one more thing keep one more thing in mind which is this specific table what is it show that intra specific competition effect on species 1 is denoted by k1 by k2 right what are k1 and k2 which are the carrying capacity of species 1 and species 2 the ratio of carrying capacity to species 1 and species 2 is the intra specific effect on species 1 and inter specific effect as we discussed earlier it is denoted by alpha and similarly on species 2 the intra specific effect is denoted by k2 by k1 and inter specific effect is denoted by beta right so if i say that the magnitude or the intensity of inter specific uh, competition and intra specific competition is similar what does it mean it means that alpha is going to be equal to k1 by k2 right so alpha is going to be equal to k1 by k2 and in the case of species 2 it is going to be beta equals to k2 by k1 right but what if i say that the magnitude or intensity of these equations are not similar well in that case there are maximum uh, several outcomes possible what are these outcomes let's have a look at that as well okay so before we move to the most crucial part of this tutorial let's have a look at whatever we have learned so far firstly we saw equation or population growth equation for an organism that had overlapping breeding season and that uh, equation was given by dn by dt equals to rn where dn by dt was the change in population density as the time t progresses and r was the intrinsic rate of natural increase this equation was given when the resources were unlimited right but when the resources were limited the pop equation became dn by dt equals to r n k minus n by k and where k minus n by k represented the intra specific competition coefficients and k was the carrying capacity of the population then we saw that equation for two different species and introduce some interspecific competition coefficient alpha and beta to the equation what was alpha effect of species 2 on species 1 and what was beta effect of species 1 of on species 2 right so in this way we added these uh, equation coefficients to the equation and ultimately we got our lotka volterra competition equation and once we got the equation we saw a very important thing that was isocline Isocline was that population density of an species at which the R value of other species is going to be zero. And what does it mean that R value is zero? That ultimately dn by dt is going to be zero due to the competitive effect, right? So what were the properties of isocline? The dn by dt was zero, R was zero because the birth rate and death rate were equal. So the difference between birth rate and death rate is zero. So R is zero. And when the populations deviate from isocline, they tend to move towards the isocline in order to achieve the equilibrium so the populations before uh, the so the population density before the isocline tends to increase in size uh, in order to achieve the equilibrium and once the population size has crossed the isocline it tends to decrease in order to achieve the equilibrium so in this way we saw a couple of different things the next thing we saw was intraspecific and intraspecific competitions with the help of a table and the intraspecific competition was measured for species 1 by k1 by k2 and for species 2 it was k2 by k1 and intraspecific com uh, competition as we discussed earlier it was alpha and beta for species 1 and 2 respectively so we saw that when the magnitude of interspecific and intraspecific competition was similar for uh, a species then alpha was equal to k1 by k2 and beta was equal to k2 by k1 
right and now we are going to see what if the magnitude of these two competition are different for a species right and there are four or possible outcomes in front of us right so we are going to see them one by one and try to find out how the population density changes and which species wins or which species gets extincted or what are the conditions when both the species coexist with each other so let's find it out one by one there are many ways to understand these graphs i'll try my best to keep my words as simple as possible because my sole motto is to make you solve the questions in the examination so i'll not be going into much technicalities but on the same time i'll make sure that you get the concepts right okay with this being said let's look at our first condition so the first condition we have is alpha lower than k2 by k1 by k2 and beta greater than k2 by k1 what does that mean interest interspecific competition on species 1 is lower than the intraspecific competition and for species 2 interspecific competition is higher than intraspecific competition whenever you get a situation like this try to find out one thing that which species is competitively superior how can you do so by looking at the status of alpha and beta only alpha lower beta greater that means effect of species 2 on species 1 is lower and effect of species 1 on species 2 is greater by looking at this you can uh, assume you can see actually that the species 1 is competitively more superior so it is going to win this competition and species 2 will be extinct from that habitat right and when we get to know this now let's move to the graph earlier we saw the graph or the isocline graph of two different species right and we saw the two different isoclines on this graph everything is similar on x axis i have taken the population size of species 1 on y axis i have taken the population size of species 2 but i have plotted both the isoclines on the same graph just to compare the growth patterns of these two uh, these two species right so species 1 is winning okay and the species winning will have the isocline above the isocline of the other species right in this case uh, isocline of species 1 is shown with blue color and isocline of species 2 is shown with the red color so species 1 is winning so the species 1 isocline is above the isocline of species 2 right and this makes sense because the number of uh, uh, n1 or the species 1 individuals will be more so it will reach k1 right so this space uh, this isocline is b is going to be above the other one okay now if you look at it there are three different zones to this graph let's call them first zone which is this one second zone okay and the third zone what can we get to know about these zones well if you remember we can find out the dn by dt value of both the species in these three distinct zones how d at isocline dn by dt value of any species is going to be zero so if we talk about species 1 at this isocline dn by dt value is going to be zero so the dn1 by dt will be zero but what before this isocline so in these two zones dn by dt is going to be more than zero because the population will tend to increase in order to reach the isocline and on this zone in this zone dn1 by dt is going to be less than zero because the population has already crossed the isocline so it, the population have to decrease in order to reach the isocline value right consider only horizontal arrows in this case when dn1 when dn1 by dt is more than zero the population size tends to increase right so the arrows are pointing towards the isocline from left to right of your screen right when the uh, dn by dt value is less than 0 that means there will be negative growth the population size is going to decrease and the arrow moving towards the isocline will be pointed to from right to left of your screen clear now if we look at the isocline of species 2 what will be the scenario with dn2 by dt at this isocline dn2 by dt is going to be 
zero. But before this isocline, consider the vertical lines, uh, vertical arrows uh, for the uh, for this. So the vertical arrows before the um, before this isocline is going to be pointed upwards because the population tends to increase in order to reach the isocline. But in these two zones, the population has already crossed the isocline. So the population size have to decrease in order to reach the equilibrium, right? So the, uh, these arrows are pointing downwards. Now, what will be the resultant of uh, population growth of these two species? To find the resultant, uh, to get the resultant, many students get confused uh, at this point. Okay, but don't get confused. Remember only basic concept and for getting the resultant it is finding a right angle when you see the horizontal and vertical arrows okay so just bifurcate this uh, right angle and the arrow will be showing you the resultant okay so on zone one the resultant is uh, going to be sh uh, shown towards the isoclines because both the value uh, both the species are going to increase in size in, in this zone okay because the D n by dt value is greater than zero for both the species. In this uh, zone, both the species have to decrease in size in order to reach the isocline. So again, the equilibrium is uh, the resultant is pointing towards the isoclines. But in zone two, species one is growing in size, right? because dn1 by dt is more than 0 but it is above the isocline of species 2 so dn2 by dt will be lower than 0 right and in that in this case the resultant is pointing towards the k1 which is the carrying capacity of species 1 so it is a, another indication that species 1 is going to win the competition because whenever there will be uh, uh, in this case in this zone the population growth is going to get towards the carrying capacity of species 1 right with this in much knowledge you can solve all the questions in the examination from this graph right you don't have to uh, torture yourself much with different type of hypothesis just consider the basics you can be given this uh, condition and may be asked to find out the right graph you can be given the dn by dt values and find out what will be the condition in three different zones you can be give, uh, you can be asked about the result and directions so you can get to know these things very easily when you, you know the concepts okay now coming to the second graph this is just the opposite of this one in this case alpha is greater than k1 by k2 and beta is lower than k2 by k1 right so what's going to happen effect of species 2 on species 1 is higher and effect of species 1 on species 2 is lower so which species is competitively superior species 2 and which species is going to be eliminated which is species 1 right so species 2 is going to win this competition and in the graph which species uh, have isocline above the other it is the species 2 okay so the isocline of species 2 will be above the isocline of species 1 right and the resultant in the zone 2 is pointing towards the carrying capacity of species 2 right so everything is uh, correlated and you can get to know it very easily once you know the concept all the concepts are same d and 1 by dt will be more than 0 in this zone d and 2 by dt will be more than 0 in this zone in this zone d and 1 by dt and d and 2 by dt both are going to be lower than 0 in this zone but in this zone d and 1 by dt is going to be lower than 0 but d and 2 by dt is going to be more than 0 right so uh, d and 2 population is going to increase and d and 1 population is going to decrease getting my point so the resultant is going to point towards the k2 and the population size is go going to grow towards the carrying capacity of population 2 now coming to the third graph the conditions we have in front of us is alpha greater than k1 by k2 and beta greater than k2 by k1 so effect of species 2 on species 1 is greater 
and effect of species 1 on species 2 is also greater. So it is quite tough to understand which species is competitively superior. So we assume that in this scenario both the species are competitively superior, right? So which one is going to win? It is decided by which species have higher number of individuals initially, right? So if species 1 is having higher number of individuals initially, species 1 is going to win. And if a species 2 individuals are higher in initially, species 2 is going to win, right? So any of the other species can win. Coming to the graph, okay? Now, there is a quite, there is a twist in this graph. Because till now we have seen the species winning have the uh, isocline above the isocline of the other species. But in this case, any of the species can win. So how to decide? Well, you just have to keep one more point in mind. Look at this equation, alpha greater than k1 by k2. Simply rearrange this equation. Take k2 to this side and bring alpha to this side. What will the equation look like? k2 greater than k1 by alpha. And see what I have done here. k2 at a higher point, k2 greater than k1 by alpha. Right? Come to this side. Beta greater than k2 by k1. Do the same thing again. Take k1 to this side and bring beta to this side. What will happen? k1 greater than k2 by beta. And see what I have done here. k1 at a higher point and k2 by beta at a lower point. So in this way we got, got our isoclines. Now, till now we have three zones in the graph. Now we have four zones in the graph. As you can see, the first one, see, assume this to be second one, the third one and the fourth one. Okay, so we have to assume the four uh, zones and try to find out the dn by dt value of both the species in all these four zones, right? The concept is going to be the same, okay? Let's see for uh, species one first. In this zone, the, talking about the first zone, it is below this isocline, right? So dn1, DN1 by dt will be more than zero because the population size have to increase in size in order to achieve the equilibrium, right? So the arrow is pointing towards this side, okay? Coming to this uh, zone, this is above the uh, isocline of species one. So the population have to decrease in size, right? In order to achieve the equilibrium. So the arrow is uh, pointing towards the opposite side. Coming to the third zone, very carefully, okay? This is again above the isocline of species one. I'm talking about this zone, okay? So again, dn1 by dt will be lower than zero, okay? So the population have to decrease in size in order to achieve the isocline. So again, the arrow is moving towards that side. Coming to the fourth, uh, fourth zone, which is this one. In this zone, it is below the isocline. So dn1 by dt will be more than zero again and the population have to increase in size in order to reach the isocline. So now we have sorted with the horizontal arrows, okay? Now let's take a look at the vertical arrows, which is the arrows denoting the population growth pattern of species two. So this is the uh, isocline of species two. And we can see that in this zone, it is below the isocline of species 2. So dn2 by dt will be more than 0. So the population will move up towards upside, upward. Population will increase in order to achieve the isocline. In this zone also, okay, it is again below the isocline of species 2. So the population will move upward. Okay. In this zone, it is above the isocline. So the population have already crossed the isocline. Now the population size have to reduce in order to get the get to the isocline. So dn2 by dt will be lower than zero, right? Uh, so what will happen? The population arrow will be moving towards downward side, right? And in this case as well, this is above the isocline. So the population arrow will move towards the isocline in the downward direction. Simply, we got the four different uh, zones and their direction of arrows. Okay, now let's see at the resultant of all the arrows. 
So in this zone, dn1 by dt and dn2 by dt both are greater than zero. So the population are going to be moving towards the isocline. In this case as well, dn1 by dt and dn2 by dt both are lower than zero. So the population again going to decrease. Both the populations are going to decrease and move towards the isocline. But in these two zones, have a look. dn1 by dt is lo uh, lower than zero and dn2 by dt is higher than zero, right? So dn2 by dt population is going to increase and dn1 by dt population is going to decrease. Species one is going to decrease, species two going to increase. So the population is going to move towards the carrying capacity of population two. Coming to this zone, dn1 by dt more than zero and dn2 by dt less than zero. So the population of species two going to decrease and population of species one going to increase. So the population resultant will move towards the carrying capacity of population one, right? So in this way, we can see that any of the species can win. win. So both the species will try to uh, achieve their carrying capacity, right? And the species having initially higher number of individuals will win the uh, competition and th that species will achieve its carrying capacity. It can either be the species one or species two. Simple, just follow the basics. Coming to the fourth graph, again a very simple one. Alpha lower than K1 by K2, beta lower than K2 by K1. That means none of the uh, two species are competitively superior, right? Because effect of species two on species one is lower and effect of species 1 on species 2 is also lower so it is not uh, we cannot decide which species is going to win so in this case none of the species is interfering much in the uh, others life so both the species can coexist together right none of the species are going to eliminate it from the habitat and the graphs similar thing rearrange this to find, uh, find the, these values these four points okay then find the dn1 dn1 and dn2 by dt values for all the four quadra uh, four zones and try to find out the resultants you will see that the resultant are moving towards this point which is the stable uh, which is denoting the stable equilibrium so at this point none of the population size is going to increase or going to decrease. So uh, if both the population reach this point, uh, there is going to be coexistence in the population. So in this way, we learned all the four graphs and understood how the population are going to change the patterns. So when species one is winning, species one isocline is above. When species two is uh, winning, species 2 isocline is above when both the species are competitively superior it depends upon the number of initial individuals and the uh, species having higher number of individuals initially is going to win and if both the uh, species are competitively inferior then they can coexist together because they are not interfering much in each other's life so in this way we learned all the graphs and saw what if the interspecific competition is not equal to the intraspecific competition in magnitude, right? Now, let's talk about what are the general confusions with the students during the exam. First and foremost, that I told you earlier, they are confused with the resultant arrow. Don't get confused. Solve the horizontal and vertical arrows first and then draw it draw the resultant by bifurcating the right angle okay you will simply get the resultant the second very big uh, confusion is about these points right now i have told you these points can be uh, easily derivated okay by looking at these conditions and once you uh, start looking at these you can easily find out these points that k2 is going to be outside or k1 by alpha is going to be outside you can find it out the third very big question comes is sometimes what they do in examination they change these coefficients name so here i have written alpha and beta 
in the exam they can be uh, they can give you alpha 1 2 or alpha 2 1 so don't get confused they will be giving definitely telling you which is the effect of species 2 on species 1 and which is the effect of species 1 on species 2 so you have to follow the basics and with this you will definitely get to solve the questions so this was all about the concept of lotka volterra competition equation just learn the equation and understand these graphs one more confusion sometimes uh, come into play they sometimes uh, put the value of species 1 on y axis and species 2 on x axis so the graph sometimes changes but again don't worry understand the concept you will get to uh, solve it very easily right so this was all about the concept of lotka volterra equation now let's see a couple of questions asked in the examination let's look at the first question in front of us which is in which of the following zones dn1 by dt is lower than 0 and dn2 by d2 greater than 0 can be found so they have given us a plot in which we can see that both the isoclines of two different species are drawn and we can see that there are four zones in the graph so we have to find the correct zone in which the given condition is satisfied all right let's see this dn1 by dt is lower than zero that means the species one population is going to decrease because there will be negative growth and dn2 by dt is greater than zero that means the species two population is going to increase because there is the positive growth okay now let's find it out in the uh, graph this is the isocline of species one right so we have to decrease the population of species one and wh when will this happen this can happen only if the population size have already crossed the isocline right so this can happen in these two zones only and these two zones are eliminated from the options right now in the left two zones we have to find this condition that is which uh, in which of these two population of species 2 is going to increase and the population of species 2 is going to increase only if it is below the isocline of species 2 right so below the isocline of species 2 is only one option that is option 1 so this option is also eliminated and we have left with one option that is option 1 so option first is correct very easy and straightforward question just follow the basics and you will get the answer right now coming to the next question which is quite a lengthy and a scary question but don't worry a very easy one two species m and n occupy the same habitat given below is the state space graph in which the abundance of species m is plotted on x axis and abundance of species n is plotted on the y axis for each species the zero growth isocline is plotted so they have given us a graph in which the isocline of species m and n are drawn right they further say that zero growth isocline for species m is denoted by blue line and for species n it is denoted by red line km is the carrying capacity of habitat for species m and kn is the carrying capacity of a habitat for species n alpha is the effect of species n on m and beta is the effect of species m on n so till now they have given us the information about the question now they come to the actual question based on the above plot some deductions are made which of the following is incorrect so they have given us four statements and based on the graph we have to find out the incorrect one now by looking at the graph we can simply say that this graph is the graph in which species m is winning because the isocline of species m is above the isocline of species n all right let's have a look at this statement one by one and see how it goes so here is the graph in front of us that they, they have given first statement says that at point a species m and n both increases to see this simply draw the arrows now this point is below the isocline of species 1 so the species 1 will move along the direction this way right so the species 1 m is increasing and this point is also below the uh, isocline of species n all right so the iso uh, species n will move along this direction right so if you draw the resultant both the species are increasing so option a is correct now moving to the second option in this option they say that species m is increasing at point b so at this point is below the isocline of species m so the population will move along this direction right and they for, uh, further say, say 
that species n is decreasing which is true because this point is beyond uh, or above the isocline of species n so to reach the isocline species n have to decrease in size in order to reach the isocline so b option is also correct coming to the c option they say that species m is decreasing and it is n which is increasing this option is incorrect because we can see that species m is increasing here and n is decreasing here all right now the third, uh, fourth option in which they say species n is eliminated this option is uh, correct also because if you draw the resultant of this graph we will get resulted in this direction which is pointed towards the carrying capacity of species m all right so in this way you find out that option c is incorrect and simply draw the arrows and get the answers right well this question was asked in csir june 2016 there are many questions asked after this as well so i would recommend to practice as much as possible and if you want a book to practice these uh, questions you can grab one from the link in the description below all right and that's it for this video let me know if you like my work comment section is open for all the queries and suggestions i would really appreciate if you take a moment to subscribe to this channel because it will help me grow and share this video as much as possible to spread my words because sharing is caring catch you guys in the next one bye bye